Okay, so are we live? Are we live? Yes, we are. Ross Leak, Cal Gibbs, Laser Show, and Lowy, welcome everyone. Right. Yeah, good Gavin, yourself. So let's chuck that on there. Now we're going to have to lift that up a bit. Hang on, Ben. Hello, Valerie, how are you? that okay and we're good hang on a second fam I'll be back in a second Alright. It's not even working. That's better. Okay. Oh, that's a bit better. Welcome everyone. Now. Ah. Welcome, how you doing crew? Let's just um, lift this up a bit again. All right, now we're ready to rock. Ah, that's a bit better. UKC fishing with Big Dan, how hey main James? Mate, the beer drinkers have James, the goat herders don't have James, okay? I'll tell you, it's hard to work under these conditions. Welcome, everyone. So, Valerie, welcome. <sighs> Nothing like a good cup of tea. And all the English viewers in chat can vouch for me on that. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's just get rid of this now. There we go. All right. So, this is what we're going to do. We are going to do a live stream today on how to rig soft plastics. Now, we've caught and released, I would say, an easy 35 mile away on stream and off stream this month just on soft plastics. So they work. <laughs> if I can use them, anyone can, if you know what I mean. And uh, what we're going to do uh is going to show you just basics with soft plastics okay now me personally the one brand of soft plastic that has never let me down 
are these Z-Man soft plastics made in America. Okay, um, fantastic quality product. Very durable. They've obviously done their research um, with the fish species that they have over there. And uh, we've been using the Z-Man soft plastics for quite a while now and they've been quite a good product that has delivered results, which is what you want. So, now, soft plastics are only a part of what you're trying to achieve uh, when you're fishing with your soft plastics because obviously you've got two types of soft plastic. You've either got the ones that imitate fish, or no, sorry, three types. The ones that imitate fish, the ones that imitate crustaceans, and the ones that imitate oh, squid cephalopods. I can't remember. But what we have here, the, uh, these are the chase baits, okay? So these are four different types of squid that they make in their chase baits. They even have a uh, little UV model here that you can fish under jetties and piers here with my right handies, okay? So these are absolutely fantastic lifelike representations of the real thing. Okay, and uh, the people that had the foresight to make these very clever cookies, okay? And uh, I mean, you can use these either fishing out of a boat or you can use these casting from the shore. Now, with your soft plastics, you have different styles of heads that you can put on your soft plastics, okay? Now these are the old traditional um, style heads here, okay? You can buy these in uh, bulk as I have done here from a local tackle store in Bunbury called Whitey's Tackle. There you go, the traditional turned up eye, the traditional weighted head. You use a um, soft plastic that matches the size of the head and away you go, okay? Now, hello Mystic Mayhem, how are you? From there, Okay, um, a lot of the really good soft plastic jigs are designed and made in America and uh, Asia. That's okay, Mystic Mayhem, welcome. Okay, so what we have here is we have um, some Berkeley Saltwater Pro jig heads on owner hooks, okay. And then we also have some of these um, snagless designs from Razor Edge Lures, okay? Like that one there. All right. So these ones, um, designed and tested in Australia, made in the United States of China. There we go, fam. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let you in on a little secret with soft plastics. When it comes to soft plastics, super glue is your best friend, okay? One well-placed drop of super glue in the right spot on a soft plastic head is the difference between catching fish and not catching fish. I pre-rig all my soft plastics, I glue all my soft plastics, okay? And it's just a little bit of insurance to ensure that you get a chance catching the fish okay and it doesn't put the fish off maddie how are you buzz welcome mate uh it doesn't put the fish off okay what it does is it just gives you an option because with yourself plastics one of the most important things is water flow so see the shape of these heads with the way that design see how they have a lot of bullet type heads and that sort of stuff that's designed so that the water flows over the soft plastically evenly Okay, all right, and when you, um, did I just say soft plastic? I just crossed soft plastic with evenly. Well, go me, making my own language. Don't forget to like the uh, live stream today, fam. Okay, so these are designed to allow water to flow over the soft plastic tail, okay? Now, uh, a lot of people also um, ask about uh, colors for different fish. So, I don't know whether you can see this, Okay, but there we go. Okay, 
when you fish in the estuaries for black brim, flathead, whiting, all that sort of stuff, your dull, more natural colours like your olives, your browns, and even um, your blood worms. So for example, uh, motor oil is one of the most popular colours on the planet for soft plastics. And then you have the uh, blood worm colour, okay? And then you have variations of them. So you have motor oil, midnight oil has a bit of gold fleck through it. Um, you have a lot of different colours, you know? Um, these pro lures are the brown soft plastics, that's your grub tail. Okay, so what you've got to do is just figure out on the day, okay, um, what works. In salt water, there's a little saying in salt water, when in doubt, just use a white tail or a white soft plastic, okay, so when in doubt, just use white. All right, that's one of the rules of salt water fishing and it works quite well. Now, with your mulloway and that sort of stuff, you want to have a soft plastic that's got a little bit of um, a glow in it. Okay, so with that glow, when it's in deeper water, it just makes it easier for the fish to find. Now, <coughs> excuse me, one thing that people neglect, neglect, sorry, I try and speak English Jim. Okay, is storage. So for example, this is a container from Bunnings. Okay, much cheaper than tackle boxes, but they aren't plastic proof. If I was to take a plastic out of its a soft plastic out of its tail rig it on a head and put it into one of these boxes it would melt through the plastic okay so my uh personal preference and this is only my personal preference you've got to remember what i say in my streams are my opinion and my opinion alone all right they're not designed to influence anyone i'm just showing you what i use but um i think that the best value for money um soft plastic boxes and they're also um, waterproof as well as you can see here in the um, seal that's on the top lid are the Zerek um, gadget boxes okay these are soft plastic proof and the good thing about them is they make a water uh, well a watertight seal so if you've got any sense and that sort of stuff in there they don't uh, disappear as well but when you have your soft plastics in their packaging um, you know it's still okay to put these into the soft plastic boxes that aren't um, soft plastic proof, okay? So, what I'll do is I'll just do that now. I'm just gonna put this in here. All right, so there's a couple of little packets of pro lures. What else do we have? That's one that's been used. So I'll put all the ones that have been used in here. And what you do, Famo, all right, is don't take your um, soft plastics out of their packaging until you're ready to use them, okay? because that, that way these are nicely packed in here. All right, that's another really good color, which is Calico Candy, usually with a bit more red in it. It's just like a slightly redder um, bloodworm. Okay, that goes here. All right, so we've got five and five is 10 heads. I've got, um, what have we got here? Yeah, what I'll do is I'll show you how to rig up brim soft plastics, I'll show you how to rig up um, Mulloway soft plastics. And then what we'll do is that way you can go off and fish them yourselves. Now, when I say, you know, how to rig up Mulloway and uh, Brim soft plastics and all that, there's no uh, right or wrong on that. Um, we're doing a soft plastic stream at the moment, mate, so we'll concentrate on that, okay? If you would like that question answered, please go to the Discord, thank you. Now, so, yeah, we'll, we'll deal with this topic first and then we'll through there, man, okay? Right. Okay, so we've got, I've got grubs there, slim swims there, that's a blood worm, great. So let's deal with that and we'll deal with that. Hello, Skyquake. Yeah, that's great, Seal. Just go into the Discord, bud. Okay. Right. So. Okay. Chuck that over there. Right. So. 
Now, what we've got here is these are soft plastics that are used specifically to target um, larger fish species like Mulloway. Okay, so we'll just get rid of these snagless jig heads there, like so, okay. Yeah, that's what happens, um, Mystic Mayhem. The other thing you've got to do too, right, is when you store your soft plastics, you've got to try and store them flat. So see that? These are fairly big soft plastics that we're going to use for Mulloway on our trip up to the north of the um, state. Riley, how are you, mate? And you've got to try and store them flat. Um, don't try and store them so they overlap on each other, okay? Right, that's glued in there, which is good. That's not going to move. Now, now I have got a uh, another soft plastic box here for larger soft plastics and what you do is when you um, do your soft plastic boxes right just do them up so they target the different fish species that you want to target so I tend to put the same style and size um, I didn't know that they put the same uh, style and size of soft plastic in each one so that way you've got your brim box you've got your flathead box you've got your mulloway and snapper box Okay, there we go. So, right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to rig up one of these each, okay, in here, and that way we'll work from there. Now, we're going to deal with, um, hello, Culpable, how are you? We're going to deal with fishing rods and fishing reels for soft plastics later, and then we'll deal with techniques because there's no point going into gear and equipment until we've sort of dealt with how to put our soft plastics together, okay? So, with these Z-Man um, soft plastics, we have four in here and we have three in here, okay? So, what we'll do is this, that's seven, okay, so four, two, six, eight, nine. We're gonna have to leave one of those in there. So what we're gonna do Now, nah, Lowy, whenever you fish with soft plastics, always take it off your line and put it back in your tackle box. These tackle boxes, see how they're a, um, uh, a tinted tackle box? That's designed to stop ultraviolet light getting on your soft plastic tails, because they will fade. Okay, and see these, how they're not a fishing application, right? I mean, there are soft plastic boxes out there that are clear or like a cloudy type of color, but you take them off your fishing rod every single time you finish fishing, mate. It's not like a lure. I mean, think of it this way, right? Think of a soft plastic just virtually like a soft plastic bait. Okay, so if it's a soft plastic bait, treat it like any other bait, you know what I mean? So, now, what we've got here is we've got some Z-Man um, pearl-coloured seven-inch scented jerk shads, okay? Yeah, Mystic Mayhem, Jarvis Walker is a good, cheap little brand, mate. Hey, look, there's an old saying, you know, what's the old saying? Um, don't be the guy with, or guy or gal or whatever, with 5,000 in the bank and a $100,000 car, be the person with a $5,000 car and a 100,000 in the bank, okay? So, um, yeah, but Mystic Mayhem, never ever buy kits, okay? Kits are only designed for um, the twice or three times Jarvis Walker reel to start out. Learn how to use that. And then if you decide that you want to pursue soft plastics, right, then what you do from there is then that way you just work from there, okay? Never go out and go gangbusters on... Um, you know, rods and reels and that sort of stuff if you don't even know whether you're going to like what you're doing. And look, Cal, I've been using Jarvis Walker for years, okay? I started off with Jarvis Walker back in the day. Oh, I have no idea what that smells like, but I don't want to really try and smell that then have dinner straight after. I'll give you the tip. Oh, that's pretty rough. Okay, and um, it depends, okay? So look, now remember, I'm not trying to run down 
any um, companies here. These are McCarthy baits, right? I think they're designed in South Africa. These are a very tough, strong South, uh, sorry, these are a very tough, strong, soft plastic from South Africa. Sorry, I had soft plastic Lexia there. Okay, and I mean, it doesn't matter how tough they are. Z-Man baits are a very soft, soft plastic. When the water flows over them, because they're such a soft texture, they move beautifully. If you're chasing Taylor, as we call them in Western Australia, or Bluefish, as they call them in America and Europe, and also Elf and Shad, as they call them in South Africa, uh, 8 to 10 kilo Taylor, Bluefish, Elf and Shad, whatever you want to call it, will destroy one of these with one bite, purely because of the fact that they're such a toothy critter, mackerel, all that sort of stuff. Um, I've got some soft plastics that I've caught and released over 10 brim on, and I've still got them here, okay? And I've got others that I've caught and released over 10 mulloway on that I've got here. The good thing about soft plastics is, with soft plastics, you have a very clean hookup because it's all single hook, okay? So, um... Oh, <laughs> culpable. I'll take a photo of all the fishing gear that I've had packed since last Monday. I'm so excited for this fishing trip, seriously. This is, um, you know, I come from the have-nots, right? And um, to actually have all the gear and go on a trip now is just great, you know? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to rig soft plastics, okay? Now with soft plastics, profile is very important on soft plastics, okay? And if you look after the little one percenters, right, eventually it comes up to 100%. And then what you do is you have everything ready to rock, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you how to rig some of these larger soft plastics. So this is a seven inch soft plastic, okay? Right, now, see how that's flat across the top and the eyes on the top. So that soft plastic, right, has to sit um, with the belly down and see how that tapers out in the water. That's going to wiggle beautifully, okay? Now, oh, okay, Riley, yeah, we, that's one of the few fish we do get over here, mate. So, when you rig your soft plastics, a lot of the soft plastics are pre-rigged in some instances, right? And then what they do is they, um, some of them have pre-drilled holes here, and when they make them, now see how that has a line on top there, right? What I've got to do is when I do this soft plastic, you want to try and get this flush into the middle of the soft plastic, okay? So you want this when it finishes. Now see that there? Now that's probably a little bit too big a hook for this soft plastic, but where we're going with that 10 foot one piece fishing rod. This is a 50 gram lead head, okay? And uh, on top of that, what it's gonna let me do is it's going to um, let me cast this soft plastic a uh, long way, okay? And that way I'll be able to cover more ground. Now, see how this has got this little bit of lead that is facing that way so when you slide the soft plastic over it okay it detracts from it trying to go the other way right so what we will do is whenever you rig a soft plastic do yourself a favor take a couple of minutes and just measure where you want your hook to come out okay so visualize where you want your hook to come out so our hook needs to come out about here right now i don't want to put the point of the hook too far to the left or too far to the right, too far up, too far down. So what I've got to do here is, okay, so I've put that in there. Now, see that there? Okay, see how that is pretty well flush in the middle of the um, soft plastic head. Now notice how I've put this on upside down with the um, top of the lure facing the shank, but when I turn this round, it'll bite itself because in the water, the hook will face hook up. That's why they're um, virtually snag proof. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna work my way around here, come on. Now, I find it a lot easier when I'm doing this is if I've got the soft plastic, 
directly under the hook shank because then you don't um, stray with where you're trying to um, put the hook. Okay, so let's just get this right. Come on. And it is, you've got to work with this, the tension of the soft plastic as well, Famo, when you do this, right? Come on. Right, get on there. Okay. So, right, now see that? That's pretty good. So what we've done here, see how this hook has come up in the middle of the soft plastic in the ridge? exactly where we wanted to put it. So what'll happen is in the water that will track straight. See that? Now, if anything, um, not really Mystic Mayhem because with your soft plastics, you want to be able to cast them and you want to be able to get them to get to the bottom rather quickly. So see that there? That's actually a pretty good sized jig head for that, okay? Now, let me show you a little trick. This is gonna make the difference between catching fish and not catching fish, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is, remember what I said about water flow, right? So if this goes back a bit, see how that starts to hunch, right? See how that starts to hunch? If that goes back off there, see how that starts to hunch and it affects the shape of the soft plastic? So this is what we're gonna do. What I'm gonna do here is, I'm just gonna put a little drop of super glue right there. Come on. Not too much, all you need is a drop. What's happened there? <sighs> That's what's happened, right here. Excuse me for a second, Thamo, I've just gotta go and get a bit of wire. They make a lot of money out of making super glue containers that stick, you know? Back in a second, I've just got to clean that nozzle before I glue it. Okay. Hey Steve, how are you mate? Get out of there, come on. That's better. Hey, we've cleaned the nozzle. Hey Steve, how are you bud? And look, thanks to the 14 people that are in here watching. Okay, so what we've done, we've put the soft plastic on the jig head. Okay. Now, just a little drop in here, that's all you need. See that? That is literally one drop of super glue right there. Give it 10 or 15 seconds just to start to dry out a bit. Right. Good work. Now, boom. So what we're gonna do is, we're just gonna stick that straight to the um, jig head like that. Right. Now what I've got there is I've got a beautifully positioned soft plastic, right? We've got the lovely little belly on it, like a little bait fish. We have the slight arch at the top of the back. And because that's stuck to the jig head, that's gonna give us maximum water flow, okay? And that's gonna have a beautiful action in the water. See that, how the tail hangs down, 
Right, so that is one of the um, jig heads that we're going to use for uh, Mulloway when we go chasing Mulloway with soft plastics. Okay, so we'll just put that in our little soft plastic box. Now what I'm doing here, right, is when I put that seven inch grub tail in the soft plastic box, I'm going to just curl it slightly. That way it keeps it fairly nice profile and away we go. So now what we'll do is, right, we'll get another one done. So those four we'll use for that. And we'll use two on here. Two out, seven O. Oh. What's this one? Sipping a few brewskis. There you go, mate. It's amazing what you can achieve with a few brewskis, isn't it? Now, All right, so once again, okay, we've got a two ounce jig head with that on the shank to hold the soft plastic in. Okay, hey, wow, we've got 18 people watching. Thanks, fam. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna measure that because each soft plastic when it's molded is different, famo. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and make that to here, right. So let's bring this in a bit closer, like so. Right, okay. So, what we're gonna do now is, we're going to, I'm sipping on a brisky tea, mate. So, see this point there? So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna point that in through the soft plastic and just hold it there, right? And make sure that I've got it in the middle. So what I want to do is I want to have this right along the seam of the soft plastic, okay? All right. Hi, Riley. Um, sometimes, Riley, but not all the time, mate. I like to use dead baits and lures, you know, that sort of tests out how good you are with your fishing, if you know what I mean. All right. right, now, that's no good. Now, see how I've done that soft plastic and see how it hasn't come out of the middle? that's not going to swim properly. So this needs to go back out. Right, and we need to start again. Come on. Oh. <laughs> yeah, don't push your luck, Steve. You know what I mean? Beer can only buy so much confidence, brother. Okay, so what I've done is I've redone that soft plastic. Now see how that sits better, right? I'm still not happy with that, so we're gonna do it again. Let's bring this in here now, right? What, yeah, I know what you mean, mate, yeah. So there we are, but the only problem is when you go to fish in the estuary and that sort of stuff, bud brim and that sort of thing like the olives and the browns. So see that there? Now we've got that hanging down off the soft plastic properly. So this is a slightly different profile to that other one. The other one I had it bunched up a bit more to give it a bit more of a chunkier front, okay? Okay, so there, what's that done is see how that's nice and slim in comparison, right? See how I've got that in the middle? Okay, actually no, I haven't. Hang on. That's better. Rightio. Hello Rich and Leo, how are you mate? Oh, it depends on the fish, Riley. So. <sighs> Excellent, didn't stick my lips together, which is a win. Right, so we'll just give that 10 or 15 seconds to start working. Right, and then away we go like so, okay? So what we're gonna do now is, this is gonna hold this soft plastic in place, and this is gonna allow me to have maximum water flow over the top of the soft plastic like so. Right, beautiful. So that is gonna be a beautiful, lovely long bait in the water. All right, see how that hangs a little bit further down? So that has a slightly different profile. So if I'm fishing more open water, Right, I can use this with confidence. Yeah, good, Rich and Leo. How are you, mate? So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to place this in there. So see what I've done here, famo? What I've done in this tackle box is I've placed that with... Oh, excuse me for a second. 
I've placed that um, with the hook down and the head down. That way it's gonna get to a certain position and the tail's gonna stay nice and straight in the box, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is this, all right? Are you Rich and Leo? Um, Now, what we've got here is we've got a, um, another um, jig head. The other thing is too, fam, I've just noticed this jig head is slightly off perpendicular, right? Well, that's right, culpable. Um, and super glue, what it does is it's like anything, right? If you've got the soft plastic bunted up against the jig head, What'll happen is the water flows over the jig head and flows over the soft plastic as one. You know when they do the wind tunnel testing and all that sort of stuff, right? Okay, and if you um, glue the soft plastic to the jig head, it just makes it, you know, a little bit of insurance, mate. Hey, Phil, how are you, mate? Oh, that's right, Cal. Now, see this here, right? Um, these little cavities here is where you put scent and that sort of stuff, see in there? You can put your little scent and um, you can buy a little scent and all that sort of stuff to put in there, which will give it a little bit more lifelike, um, you know, uh, sort of appearance. Now, this jig head is in a different position to the other one, right? That other jig head was pushed a bit further into the head of the um, soft plastic. So that's something that you've got to do. Each jig head that you have is unique and each soft plastic. Um, Hey Seth, how are you bud? Yeah, I always use Loctite, mate. Loctite is the best brand on the market. And the other thing is too, I find with Loctite it doesn't have as much odour as other super glues. Like the little cheap $2 super glues, you open that when you first put the nozzle on, mate. You can smell it for miles, right? So what we're going to do is just going to measure. Okay, so this soft plastic, right, is going to come back a little bit further in the body to here, right? Now... Now remember, these will ride hook up in the water because soft plastics, um... yeah, that's exactly right, culpable. And the other thing is too, if you put super glue on there, what it does, it'll actually seal that opening that the point of the hook went through so water can't get in because some pl soft plastics, when the water gets in between the hook and the internal of the soft plastic, it'll balloon, okay? And it affects the action. Oh, it does laser show, okay? Now... Let's just get this done here. Good. Right, that's a very good position. Okay, what have we done here? That's not too bad. Yeah, and take your time with soft plastic, fam. I don't rush because you could end up hooking yourself, which is, you know, something that you'll never live down. Okay, now see that there, right? When you look at that, you think that it's not quite there. That's actually a pretty good position. The other thing is too, fam, right? When you do your soft plastics, the higher up the body of the soft plastic you go and the lower down the body of the soft plastic you go, right? It can change the profile of how the, the soft plastic swims. Okay, so see that there, right? We've got a little bit of a gap there. See how it's a little bit bunched up? So. What we'll do now is, once again, just a little bit of super glue, right? A little bit of, well not super glue, Loctite, oh Loctite super glue professional, right? I always spend that little bit extra money on super glue. Just a drop, you don't need much. <sighs> Let it just wash around on the jig head. Just a little drop, mate, that's all you need. Right, give it <sighs> 10 or 15 seconds. Right, the other thing is too, don't touch soft plastics, then touch your eyes. Never ever do that. Okay, so, rightio, come on, get in there, come on, right, oh, that's right, culpable, right, so see that, what we've got there is, the opening to this soft plastic lure is now sealed, Okay, no, that's terrible, hang on. Let's try that. Why, how did I miss that? Hang on, fam. Got to get it in the middle. There we go, that's better. Right. That'll work.
<laughs> yeah, they do laser show. Hang on. There we are. Alright, much better. There you go. Better. Alright, see that? Beautiful little profiled soft plastic. So what we do now is we'll just plonk this down in here. Okay. Excellent. So we've got three soft plastics ready to go for Mulloway fam. Now look, you can obviously reuse your soft plastic heads fam. Um, I prefer to rig them up right, and have them ready to go, you know. Um, I've actually got a heap of these. So what I'm going to do is, uh, some of them do Riley, some of them don't. You've got two types of... Um, the soft plackies mate you've got the ones that work off a visual attack right and then you've got the other ones that also have scent infused these are scent infused okay now what we'll do is we'll do four of these seven inch tails and then i'll do one of the grubs all right now where do i want to go with this i want to have this probably a little bit different profile now because the other thing is too you can rig these different ways for different water conditions too fam okay so we'll show you that in a second. Bring that out. Oh, nice one, Steve. There you go, mate. Now the other thing is too, Famo, see with these jig heads, see how the hooks are coming out slightly higher up the head of the jig head? On the other ones we had, they came out lower. So what you've got to do is you've got to adjust the height of the soft plastic when you do this to also compensate for the hooks. So a lot of these other ones aren't as high up. Right, so let me just have a look at this. Okay, so I need to bring that down lower in the soft plastic. That's where it comes out there, good. So let's bring this in like so. We'll just bring this in a bit lower, like that, good. And this will give us a different profile. There we go. Come on. Work that through. Now see how I brought that hook higher up in the profile there? See how that's hanging down beautifully. So when you retrieve that, it'll flick up great. Okay. Now, tell you what, Steve, if you drink enough bevies, remember you are Australian, bud, you'll be thinking that you have a lunar eclipse when you pass out looking at the light, mate. You've got to go through that as you're growing up, you know? Right. Oh, that's right, Steve. Now what I'm doing, giving this 10 or 15 seconds. Now see that there? That two or three millimeters on that soft plastic with the super glue, right? Can make all the difference between catching fish and not catching fish, right? Excellent. So what we've done there. Okay. Now see how that's stuck to the um, jig head, right? So that's going to flow over that evenly, fam. Right, brilliant. Oh, Lowy, they call those stingers. So what happens is with that, though, this 7-inch soft plastic, right, the fish that are going to hit this soft plastic, I mean, a mulloway this big has got a mouth on it like that, mate, that's going to floss with it, okay? So, yeah, it doesn't matter. And normally, and a lot of times, too, what they'll do is they'll hit that towards the head, okay? And um, yeah, so what I've done is I've brought the hook out higher. So what this is going to do, this is going to have a slightly different action in the water, okay? Because remember, how they look here and how they look in the water are two different things. So there we go. We've got another soft plastic head. And if you have a look at that, see how that's all linked now? Right. Let me just bring that here. See? Yeah, that's going to be okay. See how that's all joined now? That's really good. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in my soft plastic box. Now, the other thing too, right, when you do this, okay, you've got to have your um, soft plastics so that the tails aren't folded over each other, 
Right, now see how they're just curled around like that? Right, beautiful. Okay, beautiful. So, like that. Good work. Now, okay. Now, these are the traditional grub tails, right? This is the Z Man um, Glow. It's a grubs or grub Z or whatever. Right, these actually have a little bit of luminous glow to them. So if you're fishing at night underneath pylons and that sort of stuff, right. Now, see when they've made this soft plastic, obviously what they've done is they've pressed it, they pressed it two halves together, right. What you've got to do is you've got to make sure that this hook comes out in that seam. Now, the other thing is too, when you've got these tails, right, this might seem a little bit OCD, but I find with some soft plastics, sometimes when you're fishing the tails up like that work, then other times the tails down work. Don't know why, right? It's just something that I've picked up when we were fishing for the Mulloway on a few times. So what it is, I cast out, doing everything right, no real bites. I looked at it and the tail was down, so it was dangling down like this. And then what I did is, um, I got another soft plastic with the tail up and started catching fish, right? So, see that there? See how we've got a seam on that there? Right, so what I'm gonna try and do is, these Z-Man soft plastics are just exquisite, fam. They are just such a beautifully textured, textured soft plastic. Right, so, we need to pick our point, there we go, so, what you want to do is, see that seam there? See that seam there where the soft plastic has been pressed together? That's the angle that your hook needs to go in. See that there? You need to run your hook directly down that seam. Okay, so. Come on. So what I've done there, Famo, see how I've brought that out? Now that's got a little bit of a bend in the grub tail, right? But see how that's come out right on the seam? Right, when I glue this soft plastic, it's gonna glue it into their place. So what I've done is I'm probably um, two ridges over, but when I glue this, this will straighten it out and it'll swim true. Right, so here we go. So once again, we've got that little two or three mil gap there. That's all right, it's not quite in sh the correct shape yet, so. Yeah, I'll, yeah, no worries, Culp, I keep forgetting that. Right, so, and the other important thing, see how I've got the um, hook right in the middle of the soft plastic there? Right, I'm just gonna let that super glue just um, start to go. Now watch this, all right, boom. Press that up against there. Come on, sunshine, let's go. Right, let the heat take over as it fuses it. Hello, Michelle, how are you, mate? Welcome to the stream. Now, see how when I glued the soft plastic to the jig head, see how it straightened it out? Look, see how it straightened it out? Beautiful. Right, that's lovely. These are the little one percenters that you do at home, fam. When you go out and fish, it'll just make all the difference. Now see how that's sealed? Look at that. Right. When that flows. Oh, that's right, Stephen. That's why these Zerek boxes, mate. I, I love these Zerek boxes. They're fantastic. So this is a fairly big grub tail, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that flat in here. Right, like that. So what we've got is we've got a really good mull away and snapper box now. Right, so what we've done too, okay, is I've got enough soft plastics here to last me a lifetime. Now, what I'm going to do, uh, right, these are a slightly different profile. Now, these are these are one ounce jig heads, okay. 
So these aren't going to cast as far and they're not going to sink as quickly, okay? Right, so chuck that over there. So what we have, now see the difference in these jig heads? See how they have a um, pointier head on them? You could fish these in um, shallower water, right? And you could even fish them in probably slightly faster flowing water. They'll punch through the um, water column a lot easier. So what we're going to do is we're going to do um, four different squid. Now, this is probably one of the most... Um, common coloured squid out there, okay? This is the generic brown with the green eyes. Okay, that's a beautiful little, look at that. I mean, look at the detail that's gone into that, um, that little soft plastic. It's even got the side wings on it that'll undulate in the water, okay? So, now what we wanna do is, we want that, okay, to be on top of the hook when we do it, so that'll go through there. So let's have a look. Now this is not the right squid head, um, not the right jig head for this squid, but I couldn't find any of the ones. The other ones that come in have got a special little um, like jig head that fish these chase baits. I couldn't find them, so we're just gonna make do with what we've got, okay? So, I mean, this, this will absolutely destroy the snapper, fam. Okay, this will absolutely destroy the snapper. Okay, the, the poor buggers won't know what to do to themselves when they see these, right? They're gonna think that they're at the McDonald's menu and the next thing they know. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, now see how we've got the green glow in the eyes there, right? We're gonna put that on top of the hook. That's gonna be underneath now, and that's gonna be the green glow on top. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna measure it. Okay, so that needs to come out about here. Now see how we've got the little ridge on top of the, um, squid there and then that one we don't but see how we've got that little ridge there we want our hook to come out in the middle of this squid soft plastic all right i'm not destroying snapping mystic mayhem I'm, I'm catching them just to annoy you nothing personal like all right so now the other thing is too with the point of the hook what you do is just visualize it going into the squid end there so we bring that in like that, boom. Okay, now see how that, yep. So what I've got here is when I hang that down, see how that's slightly off? That means I'm slightly off. So let's take it out again. All right. Now see how that's hanging down vertically? That means that I'm spot on with my hook position. But let me just double check. No, that's off as well. So what I've got to do is just steady, steady. Now that's better. Now that's better. All right, now see how that's actually vertical? That means that I'm equidistant in the middle of the squid from both sides, right? Now I can proceed. Just little things like that that make all the difference, famo. Now let me just bring this in here. Um, yeah. With these Samsung Ultras, right, the Galaxies, because they've got such good lenses on them, right, it looks like it's fairly um, lit up in here. I assure you it's not. No. Let's go back again. I'm actually doing this in quite low light situations, so... Right, that's beautiful. Look at that. Uh, laser show, um, it depends where you shop. These were $17.95 for three of them, but they're quite a durable squid. Now see that there, see how that's holding up really well? Okay, now see how that's bunched, right? Because that's bunched, that's gonna allow me to like um, glue this squid tail to the um, head again. <sighs> right. Okay, I'm just gonna get that right the way around the jig head and then in here, boom, let's go, come on. Beautiful. 
So what I've got now is I've got a squid that literally looks like it's part of the jig head. Look, we've got that absolutely perfect, fam. I see how the little side wings come out of the jig head. <coughs> Excuse me. See that there? And I've got the hook smack bang in the middle of it. Right, and when that sits in the water, that's going to actually sit perfectly. So anything that goes near that is going to get caught. Right. Oh, it is, Riley. Um, these are just off the charts, my friend. I've never seen anything like this. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put two in here. Great. Right. Now. And all it is, just all the super glue does... Um, Fam, is the super glue gives you an option for starters you know what we're going to do is that's going to the water's going to flow over that beautifully there's no issues there these little side wings are going to uh, move as well like that in the water it's going to look so natural the other thing is too normally the head will sit or come in through the sand they won't really see it but i mean you know look at that that's not a very big squid right that's not a very big squid at all. So you, you'd be surprised at the small fish that'll hit that as well. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get one of these ones here. Okay. <laughs> well, Riley, these are the things that you have to do to give yourself a little bit of a chance, mate, to get fish, because it's gonna get tougher. I mean, the East Coast is so populated now. Okay, it's literally shoulder to shoulder. We don't have that in WA. Thank God. Now see this here? Now little basics, see how the eyes go on top? Right. Now, just take your time. Now this is gonna be clear. If you make any mistakes with this, right, boom, let's go. Now see that there? Right. Now I can actually see the join in that squid, right? That's pretty good. So when I put this through, if I do this up against the light, I can actually run that hook straight down the joint, right? Which is a very rare luxury. Now I've probably bought that in about three mil too far. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back down here. I'm gonna put the point back in the soft plastic, right? I'm gonna bring it in just a little bit closer like that. Okay, and that's gonna sit true much better. Right, good work. Now, Okay, Fimo. So see that there? Look. Okay, look at that. Spot on. If anything that I can criticize, this lead um, little fitting on the hook is probably a little bit big for this squid jig. Sorry, squid um, head. But um, there we go. All right. So there we go. All right. So that one's ready to go. We put that in there. All right, so what we have now is we have a box of really nice, big, soft plastics ready to rock for Mulloway, Snapper, you know, whatever we want. So we'll just block that off now. All right, that's good. Okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rig up two more squid heads here, All right? Oh, Steve, it's just little things like that, bud, that make all the difference, mate. You, you've just got to, you've just got to try and do what's right for yourself, pal. I mean, you know, you don't really get told this stuff, okay? You just got to look. You can't fake fishing, right? You can't fake fishing. You know, there's so many people out there, and you can tell when they do their content. No, they've just watched other people, 
you know, do something with fishing and then they're running with the idea, you know what I mean? So, I mean, yeah, all right, so here we go now. With this, mate, this is the little one percenters that I've picked up over the years, mate. And you just gotta sit back, take your time. It's not a competition, right? Um, now, Riley, you said before, right, that all fish are dumb. I've got a question for you, bud. Have you ever gone fishing and not caught, caught a fish? Right, so, once again, see how we've got the glow on the eyes that's on top? So you usually put your jigs on up, so the squid, sorry, the soft plastic on upside down because you've got to remember it flips over. So let's have a look. All right, get that in the middle. Boom. Now see how that slightly skew if? I haven't put that in the um, soft plastic properly. See how that's not on center? So we take that out again. Bring that in there. Um, uh, it's a little bit better, I guess. No, it's not all right. Hang on. Line up the hook shank with the line. Ah, oh, not really, Steve. <laughs> I've just made a lot of mistakes, bud. No, let's go here now. Right, nope, I've absolutely butchered that. I might get into making soft plastics later, fam. I'm th looking at the uh, moulds and that from America, but they're not cheap. All right, so. Right, there we are. That's not too bad, I guess. Yeah, that's right. Now, this one's going to hold up okay regardless. But once again, just a little bit of super glue, not too much. <sighs> right, try not to stick your lips together. Oh yeah, it's it's pretty simple, uh, Lowy. It, it's look, there's a lot of hype with fishing that you don't need, fam. You know, here we just like to keep it fairly down to earth and real, right? Okay, great. Now see that? All right. So see that there? What we've got is we've got a beautiful little squid there. See that? Okay. Right. That's all part of. Yep, so that's stuck to it, that's not coming off. Okay, all right, so there we go. See that? Beautiful. What I'll do now is, um, try not to put different colored soft plastics together, right? And if you can space them, just always try and space them, fam. Okay, now. Okay, so what I've done here now, is that's my little brim and small mulloway box with all the motor oils and the um, the blood worms and that, okay? I'm gonna throw these in there. You never know, one day you might be fishing, uh, when we go and fish the Bustleton Jetty and that sort of stuff, you know? To be quite frank with you fam, I'm probably not gonna use that many baits from now on because, you know, unless I'm going up north or fishing off the beach and that. Off the beach, you know, we'll put our big rod out and then what we'll do is we'll just muck around with the soft plackies. Now, this is the sort of soft plastic that I'd use around a jetty at night, purely because of the glow, right? And yeah, because sometimes squid can get quite translucent and when they get translucent and then they have a certain part of them glow, right? Fish. I'm not, I won't use, I won't use any scent on the soft plastic, Steve. I don't do that, mate, I just fish. Right, I try and rely on the action that I'm putting on the soft plastics rather than scent, mate. I won't do that. It sort of defeats the purpose for me. We're better off just using a bait. The other thing is too, fam, when we go up north, I'm going to teach you how to use West Australian pilchards like lures. Okay, I'm going to show you how to use them like lures, okay? And um, certainly is, Michelle. Oh, I'll tell you, I can't wait, mate. I might head down south and try and get some salmon on the weekend, but I can't. Look. People, with salmon and that sort of stuff, you know, I'm not gonna travel to fish for salmon, I'll wait till they get here, okay? You've caught one salmon, you've caught them all, mate. Yeah. Right. Now see that? I got that flush that time. See how that's hanging down? Beautifully, and the 
shank of the hook is along the slot in the um, squid. Too far in, hang on. I see what's happened there. Right now, well, let's just do that. No, no good. Hang on, fam. Rhino, how are you, bud? Welcome, Rhino people. Rhino is across from Twitch, right? And uh, Rhino recently got partnered and uh, we sent him a few raids, okay? But all the credit goes to Rhino, fam. He's the one that put in the yards, you know. He's the one that turned the camera on and sat in front of there and reaped the rewards. Now, what I've done, see that super glue? That's a little bit much, right? But what I've done there is, okay, I've done that so that it can coat around the hook because I want this one to seal properly, okay? Now, just leave that there. Great, okay, good, and whammo, let's go in there. Rhino, can you just, uh, sorry, Culpable, can you just put in www.twitch.com slash rhino, R-H-I-I-I-N-O-O, -I -I please, and then that'll give a link to his Twitch channel. He's a good kid, and a lot of time for Rhino, and he's got a fantastic dog chisel, okay? All right, so see what we've got there, fam? See how that squid has come up flat, right? And that's equidistance. That's a really well-presented bait. Okay, right, the eyes are on top. Okay, actually what I'll do is I'll do it because uh, I'll sort that out, Cole, hang on, but Cyborg Gaming, how are you, bud? Uh, 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 oh, you're welcome, Rhino. You're a good kid, mate. The fact that you got partnered and you're still humble, bud, is just a fantastic uh, sort of, you know, indication of your character, mate. Right? All right, famo. Cyborg, how are you, bud? Welcome, mate. Okay, so what we have here, fam, is we have a couple of squid baits down the bottom, just because I didn't have enough room. Okay, and what I'm going to do is close that off now, right, like so. And what we've got is we've got more than enough soft blackies. So with these squids, right, the one downfall with super glue when you use it on your soft plastics, okay, right, one of the downfalls is it does form like a solid crust on the head of your soft plastic. What you need to do is you need to get the back end of your knife without the um, uh, point or whatever and just scrape that off from around the nozzle before you put on another uh, light head. So with that famo, these are the little squid heads that we've got left, okay? So as you can see, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna leave these in their containers, right? And these four colors have got all of the, um, well don't write it. Right now. Okay. Righto fam, now let's rig up some, let's rig up some soft plastic. All right. So these are what they call the weedless jig heads, okay? When you use these, you've got to rig your soft plastic slightly differently from them. So let me show you. What I'm going to do is, these heavier soft plastics, I'm going to put the, um, the grubs tails on. So that's one eighth of an ounce. That's one sixteenth. Okay. Goon bag, how are you, bud? Whenever someone's got goon bag in their name, you know they're happy. Okay. That's a good thing about the old goon rhino, you'd know that. When you're finished with it, bud, you can make a pillow out of it afterwards. Now, now, this is what they call a grub tail. 
Right, now this is the motor oil. This is a, a three and a half inch grub tar, right? This is one of the best lures or soft plastics for Mulloway out there, right? Now, what we're gonna do is, um, yeah, I won't do the blood worm, I'll do the motor oil, where is it? Oh, nice one, Rhino. Excellent. Welcome, Goonie, how are you, mate? Right, so. What I'm going to do is, now, when you rig the weedless hooks, oh, oh dear, can someone, oh thanks Lowy, good on you, yes yeah, Steve, don't put a full stop in your um, sentence mate, it'll treat it as a link and ban you. Alright fam, so see these, right, these are designed to be weedless, okay, now, when you rig these, you rig them a little bit differently, okay, so rather than going through here, because they're such a slim profile, what you do is you pick the point that you want that to go in through, like so. And what you do is, now remember where this tail is, right? See where this tail is? You want to basically start... <laughs> right, you're welcome. So what you want to do is you want to put this exactly on the seam where the soft plastics join. So see here? So you come in through here, about five mil from the edge, and then you come out through here like this, right? Then what you do is you bring this down to the head here, you turn it around like so, right? You bring that in there, and then what we do is to rig this weedless, we do, hang on. Yep, I got the tail right. I got that right, hang on. I'm gonna rig this one tail down. Okay. Come on, get in there, sunshine. Beautiful. So that's how you rig that weedless, see? See that through there? Now see how that hook is only about one or two mil off the soft plastic body? All right? Great. So that's how you would rig that in there like that, okay? So what you do is just bring that in there, and uh, that's the same rig that I, um, Charlie, how are you, bud? Um, that's the same rig that I used when you got that uh, mull away when you came down, Lowy, right? So that'll sit there like that. Now that's probably a little bit big for that. Um, that jig head is probably a little bit big for that tail. So just give me a second. Yeah, that's right. I've used the wrong size tail there, but that's the same method to the madness. No, that's the same head. What am I doing? Welcome, Charlie. Yep, now see that? That's how all of them rigged, but that's the one eight ounce head. That's probably a little bit too big for that. I need to go to the one sixteenth, but we'll figure that out, okay? Let me get that line in. What are you doing? Come on. That's not line, that's just manufacture. Right. Yeah, please like the um, live stream fam, so Streamlab knows what we're doing. Right, so yeah, that jig head is probably a little bit too big for that um, tail. So let's take this back now a notch, right? But that was the easiest way to show you how to do it. Okay, now what we'll do is we'll take this back. We'll go to a smaller jig head, right? Like so. Right, excellent. So this is an ultralight 1 16th, okay? This is going to um, conceal itself in the um, jig head. Sorry, in the um, soft plastic a lot better. And there we go, like so. Bring that down around like this. Okay, bring that in here. Come on, mate, get in there. There we go, famo. That's pretty well spot on there. No, no, that's right, Lobby. Ask. Okay. Now, see that? That's a much better sized um, 
jig head for this soft plastic tail. See how that's far more compact? That's the right size for it, fam. What have I done there? Hang on. Helps if you put it in the right way, mate. Get in there. That's better. How do you stop the twist in the loop knot? Uh, okay, Lowy, what you do, um, what you're doing if you do that is you're pulling the tag end of the loop knot towards the lure. Um, don't do that. Um, pull it towards the main line, okay? And that'll correct it. Okay, so let's get that in here now. Yeah, Steve, what you do, mate, is when you go fishing, you always look for that deeper water. Generally, as a rule of thumb, if you can't see the bottom, that's where you want to put your soft plastics, mate. So. Oi. So that, okay. There you go, fam. Nice little soft plastic grub. I've done that with the tail down, okay? Like I said, for some reason, sometimes they work tail down, sometimes they work tail up, you know? It just depends how you want to make it. Oh, I've got tackle box sticks, dyslexia, fam. The other thing is too, if you don't want to go to the extent of fishing, um, you know, like your soft plastics and that sort of stuff, ammo, right? If you're fishing out in the ocean, right, you want to put a, um, just use a float with about a metre of line and put one of these soft plastics on a normal hook. You'll get a fish with it, right? It's still not the same as using your soft plastics gear, but for, you know, for catching fish, you'll still be able to do it, okay? So that's basically how you rig your um, wheelist um, soft plastics fan, okay? So uh, that way what it does is it just gives you another little option um, on how to, um, you know, rig everything. Okay, now these, that's a bit off, hang on. That's probably why that didn't work. That's another midnight oil, let's do another one while we're here. You're welcome, Lolly. And look, people, thanks very much. There's 18 people watching the stream on YouTube. Um, I'm going to be doing 90% of my live streams on YouTube now. Right, we're probably going to go back to the old platform once a week if we're lucky. Right, just to sort of you know, still catch up with everyone. Okay, so I'm going to put this on a bigger um, head. Okay. proportion right now look with these soft plastics fam these will probably catch every single fish that swims uh, this soft plastic in this grub pattern you know I know a lot of uh, redfin perch fishos that fish with them uh, trout fishos that fish with them and they get a lot of fish you know what I mean Yeah, but Riley, it doesn't work that way, mate, because some people like to go um, onto one platform and stay on there, you know? So that's just, uh, yeah, just personal preference, mate, you know? The thing is, too, Riley, um, I mean, we don't we don't own viewers. A lot of streamers think they do, right? But you don't own viewers, mate. They're free to watch wherever they want. You know, you can't, you can't demand people to come and watch your stream, mate. If they want to come and watch, 
they come and watch. If they don't, well, that's their choice, you know. You know what I mean? We don't, we don't, um, we don't own viewers, mate. Oh, Rhino, just got a bit of advice, Rhino. Don't try and put hooks onto things if you've had a few, bud. All right. All right, so what I'm going to do is just a little drop of super glue on the head there. Right. Okay, I'm going to put that in there. There we go. Right. Lovely. All right, so what we've got, see that there? That's a really good angle for the water, okay? And that's going to be hugging the soft plastic body. And away we go. So there we go, fam. All right. Now, fam, um, another bit of advice too, right? Only put your soft plastics in your t tackle box, okay? Um, if the super glue has dried out, because I tell you, right? Gluing your soft plastics to your tackle box is a little bit of a nightmare and that's not a euphemism for anything either okay all right so there we go fam <laughs> rhino i can just tell that by looking at you bud that's all i'm saying but that's what happens when you victorians drink victoria bitter mate you know bad things happen when you drink vb that would be such a great ad for emu export you know this will make you laugh rhino years ago when i was working in the bottle shop i used to sell emu export and every time I sold a carton of Emu Export, the standard joke I would say is, yeah, sorry about that, mate, but I've, uh, you know, run out of axe handles and stubby singlets. So, now, this is a McCarthy bait. Okay. Um, now, this is another bait that, um, this is a fairly big soft plastic. That's a four-inch tail, right? So let's just get this down here. Let me just get this right. This is a this is a much harder plastic. Okay, uh, I think McCarthy's is a South African company. All right, they make good products, but for me, I just find them like a little bit too um, uh, not long enough. Michelle, um, it's only five days, mate. But that's okay. You know, you can only do what you can do. All right, let's bring that in here. This is a good sized tail for Pink Snapper and Mulloway Fair. Right. But see how that's a hard plastic? Look, that's already pulled through, see? Okay, so maybe what I need to do there is go a little bit further back and see how that goes. Yeah, this is why I prefer the Z-Man baits. Just nice, soft, supple, soft plastics. Okay, yeah, I don't like that. Yeah, I'm not gonna bother. I don't like those soft plastics. Oh, I'm gonna throw that in the bin. Don't like it at all. I'm just gonna stick with Z-Man soft plastics, mate. Um, yeah, find them beautiful, soft, supple, soft plastic, and I know exactly what I've got there when I'm using the Z-Man. So yeah, if you're out there, fam, right, these are, me personally, I like using the Z-Man baits in all sorts of different profiles, okay? Now look, um, thank you very much for tuning in. I hope that you've enjoyed the um, soft plastic section that we've done tonight. We've been asked by a lot of members of the community um, to do these soft plastic um, little tutorials, which we've done now. And I hope that I've kept it real enough for you, fam. You know, um, we don't really put too much height into our streams, as you're well aware. Okay, and um, look, just if I can offer one bit of advice with your fishing, right? Um, I've been fishing for a long time, and fishing is more of an obsession and a passion for me than a hobby, right? And uh, that's why I put so much into it. Okay, and um, you know, what we're doing here tonight is we're just sharing knowledge, fam because knowledge is timeless, it's going to be around, um, you know, when I'm not around anymore and everyone, so it's here before us, it's here after us, and it's here while we're here, 
and I just want to really just share that knowledge. So, I mean, like I said, now, see what I've done there, thing? Right, see how I've bunched the tails up? So take them out, right, put them back in the packet, okay, like so, and just try and keep the tails like fairly straight like that, okay? Yes, please like and subscribe, fam. That lets YouTube know that we're doing good things. So to finish, what I'll do is I'll just show you how we've set up our soft plastic box, okay? So that's our brim whiting flathead soft plastic box with a couple of little snapper soft plastics in there. Obviously, we ran out of room in the other ones. Look at that. That is such a beautiful soft plastic profile. Look at that, fam. Right, that is just, oh, can't wait to use that, you know. I was born last century, Riley. That was sort of drummed into us from a fairly young age, but because if we didn't act like that, it sort of got, you know, put it this way. Let's just say, not beat into here, but not far off, okay. So what we've got here is, that's my big soft plastic box. So that's got my seven inch um, Z-Man tails on there. Now see that there? See how I've got that in the box like that? See how that's already got a little bit of a kink in the tail fam? Right, very important. And that's beautiful. I can't wait to use that. Can't wait to use all of them. Hang on, let me just get that bend out of there. Okay, and that is the big Z-Man grub like that. That's, hopefully that just gets us a really good fish, you know. Uh, Riley, that's called life, bud. Okay, that's just something that you've got to work through yourself, mate. You can't, you can't show people where they're gonna go wrong because everybody goes through a different journey with fishing, mate. But I'll give you the, the basics. With soft plastics or with hard body lures or whatever, Okay, did you see what we did with the preparation there? We took our time, made sure that everything was perpendicular or working in with the shape of the soft plastic. You've got to get everything to um, swim true in the water straight. If you don't, it won't have as lifelike an action, okay? So even with this fam, you know, I mean, did I glue that one? I mean, look at those soft plastics, right? We're going to be using those as well when we go up north. Right, so I mean, yeah, it's gonna be a great trip. Okay, um, and this is our little, like, um, this is our little Mulloway box. All right, there's some, um, excuse me for a second. Oh, Phil, it's like anything, bud. And look, um, what I've got to remember, fam, this is only a um, small part of soft plastics, right? Um, Putting them together is one thing. Equipment's another, how to fish them's another. But look, um, get in there. Okay, see that? See how I've glued the head on there now? That's gonna have a far better action in the water than if there was a gap on there. Okay, so yeah. And what we've got now is we're ready to rock. Are you ready to rock? All right, so um, yeah, we've got our three boxes ready to go. So the other good thing about soft plastics, fam, something like that, Riley, but um, once you get past the emotional stage of fishing, mate, that's when you're dangerous. So we've got three boxes for soft plastics here, okay? The good thing about soft plastics is you don't need baits, you know what I mean? You don't need to worry about ice, a fridge, freezer, whatever, right? You just take yourself plastics, your rod and reel, one litre type with a little cutter, that's it. You can fit these into a backpack like that, but you want to always try and store your soft plastics flat, fam. You don't want to have them, you know, vertical because they'll all bunch in on each other. Hello, Skyquake Warrior. How are you, mate? Welcome, bud. <laughs> right, you don't want to have them bunching in on each other, okay, because that'll affect the shape of the tails. Right, you want to keep your soft plastic boxes flat. That's why so many of the planos with the stowaways and that sort of stuff, they've got the four shelves and they're flat and you keep them flat, okay? You want to try and keep your soft plastics so they're not 
like touching over other soft plastics you want them to have you know in some of these i've got four soft plastics when i've got small ones slightly bigger ones i'll have three slightly bigger ones i'll have two then on the bigger ones we've got one okay oh well that's right um riley but even then if you've got scented soft plastics like these were scented see how that that has that scent in the packet right i mean um i didn't know that they were scented but i'm still going to use it and uh the other thing is too, with your soft plastics, a lot of the packaging they come in is perfect for storing it as well, fam, see? You know, see how that's got the lifted plastic and all that sort of stuff? That's that. Just keep them in there. And then when you're ready to use them, then you take one out, put it on your jig head and put it in your little tackle box. So that's what you keep at home, right? That's what you take fishing, all right? So look, um, thank you very, very much for tuning in. I'd like to thank the 23 people that have come in to watch the stream. Really appreciate the fact that you've given up the um, time in your day or evening with family and loved ones to come in and watch the stream. Um, what I'll do tomorrow is tomorrow I might do a segment on, um, look, this one here, we've done it on how to rig the soft plastics, which is one part of it, right? Tomorrow what I'll do is I'll get some fishing line, okay? And I'll show you different ways to rig the soft plastic that would probably be better so we'll put put the soft plastics together and show you the method in the madness of putting the soft plastics together then i'll show you the leaders that you use for soft plastics and the variations uh yeah look steve i know that you're tough online bud and obviously she's not reading this and she's not within punching distance but you know, if she goes over the stream, Steve, okay, we know who's the boss, Steve. You just keep drinking beer so it sullens the pain barrier, right? And you're the boss, mate, until the stream goes off. But that's okay, all right? So <laughs> thanks, Rolly. Then what we'll do is we'll show you how to rig them, okay? Then I'll show you different types of fishing tackle. And then what I'll do is I'll show you um, how to fish them now. A lot of people say that you need high gear ratioed reels for soft plastic. That's true to a certain point, okay? But you also need to remember spool size is important, okay? And with that spool size, with your soft plastics, it's not about the high retrieval ratio reel for retrieve, it's for recovering your line. Okay, hey sweet peach, how are you mate? Welcome to the stream. So I'll leave you with that, okay? It's about recovering your line, which is probably gonna throw a spanner in the works because a lot of people make the mistake of using soft plastics like a lure or a bait. They'll cast it out, retrieve, oh, I've caught nothing. So I'll leave you with that, okay? Stay safe, stay well, be the best person you can be every day. What I'll do is we'll just um, finish up with a few of these. Wonderful little soft plackies. Look at that, famo. Look at this. Hey, look at that. I mean, how did they think of that? How was, I mean, when I first started using soft plastics, people would um, abuse us. What are you doing using that rubbish, you know? And the soft plastics in, you know, 30 years ago are so different to this now. Okay. Um, no, not necessarily, Stephen. I didn't say that, bud. No, 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 no. See, this is good because you're thinking, right? I've already thrown in a bit of a smoky there, which is good. And you're going to sit there and think about it for the next few days, right? So, yeah, not smaller reel, not heavier line at all. No, no, no. It's all about balance, right? And it's also about technique. So, stay well. Thanks for tuning in. Four days to the trip. Oh, can't wait. See you soon.